Aquaba, welcome to Expat Life Ghana. I'm Tony. This is my wife, Ayo. We're documenting our move from Texas to Ghana as we go beyond the return. In this video, we are talking about an insurance hoax, plus answering all of your questions live. So let's get this video started. <laughs> All right, we are live again. This is our first live for 2022. 2022, first live. All righty, we are halfway. <laughs> <laughs> it is nice of getting later, 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 it later. It does feel like we're getting a little bit late. But you know what I cannot complain about? I have to give a shout out to my family back in the United States who are dealing with sub-zero degree oh, temperatures. Oh, we do not miss that at all. I don't miss at that. At all. Not even a little bit. Not at all. No. So I I, I can't complain about that. That's got to be something that I'm looking forward to and enjoy about being here in Ghana. So whoop. absolutely. Well, we have a interesting conversation to be had today. Mm -hmm. We are talking about an insurance hoax that got our Facebook group. Uh, they were pretty chatty about it. <laughs> exactly. You know, like why do we need traveler's insurance? Oh, yeah. What's this all about? Who's making money off of it? So it did kind of, yeah, as we dive into it, it does totally seem like mm. trying to profit off of uh, those coming in. Yeah. I read this crazy statistic the other day. What's that? It said that Ghanaians abroad send back a billion dollars into the Ghana economy every yeah. year. Every year. You think that's true? You think that's a good number? Like, is that's that probably lower than that? But who knows? Yeah. Like, you think the yeah, number's it's... too low, or it's overinflated? Is... It's overinflated. Yeah, I think well, a billion dollars. I don't know. It's kind of hard because you don't know how they're tracking that, and <laughs> and, then, the, and then and uh, then there's just some money coming in nobody knows about. So yeah. uh, like yeah. maybe it's their their best estimate. Could be, could be. Well, so that's an interesting thought to think about how um, money is raised and sent back based on mm -hmm. what's going on with people in the diaspora. Yeah. So that's, I thought that was a really interesting number. But let's jump in to comments and say hi to a couple of folks that are already out there. Yeah. Miss T, how are you? We have to adjust this <laughs> just a little bit here. Greetings. We are doing well. All right. Thank you. Uh, cozy Quilts for Scholars, greetings. How are greetings. you? We're doing well. We're doing well. I'm We're fine. Doing very well. Thank I'm fine. you. I'm fine. Thank you. Hello, Io. Hi, Tony. Checking in from Pennsylvania. All right, uh, Darlene. Thank you for checking in. Is it cold Appreciate there? It. I don't know. Yeah, think yeah. It's going to be cold there, right? Well, Pennsylvania, isn't that where the bridge claps or something today? Oh, or is that Pennsylvania or Pennsylvania or something today. like that? Yeah. Hope everybody's okay. Yes. Luciana, hello. Good to All see right. you. All right. We got family chugging in. All right. <laughs> I caught this live. Yes, you did, Miss Watson. All right. Thanks for checking in. Hello from Bogatanga. All right. And I enjoy, or I love watching you guys. Greetings from the NYC. Hey. Oh, my gosh. I just saw pictures today from our last trip to New York City. Well, technically, ah. our only trip to New York City, and um, we looked like we had a good time. Oh, it was. It was a great time. I really enjoyed myself. So NYC, folks, I got to give a little shout out. I lived there for a few years, but you and I had that one trip. We had a good mm -hmm. time. Yeah, that was a good time. That was a good time. We saw the <laughs> a comedy show at like Caroline's and yep. stuff. We, we did all of the things. And shout when I tell to... you, I dragged him all over the city. Oh, it was fun. <laughs> On the subway, too. Oh, that was crazy. Gotta have stories to tell from New <laughs> yeah, York. Yeah, that was crazy. You gotta have stories, yeah. right? Love New York. Oh, it's snowing in Pennsylvania. Sorry, uh, sorry yo. <laughs> uh, and Watson says it's very cold right now. Checking in from Sacramento. Oh, Cali checking in. Hey, Morella, hello. Hey, all right. We got some of those hardcore, dedicated fans. We love you guys. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Dallas, hello. All right. And then uh, Cozy Quilts says, what time is it there? It's 10 in the evening. 10 in the evening here. Hello from North Carolina. Snowing in Maryland, right, too. First time catching a live. Larry, where you been, man? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, so he says it's snowing, snowing in Maryland. We've got someone else saying uh, it's um, Louis snowing is... in Missouri. Oh, greeting. Oh, yeah, it's snowing there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's snowing everywhere. Oh, snowing, yeah. Um, is it snowing in Wakanda? Uh, no, don't think so. <laughs> Hello from Harrisburg, PA. Oh, no. Is it freezing in Texas? Like, it's not going to freeze in Texas. Yeah, we don't, I, we don't like hearing freezing no. in Texas together. I get a little paranoid. I get a little hot flash going on with that one. Woohoo! Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Uh, Ernest has been waiting for this live. Glad you made it. Thank you. We've got that. Um, Ernest is a first timer, and we've got Cheryl here. It was awesome. Oh, first. Oh, welcome to your oh, got a couple of first live times. here with us. Yeah. Expert Live Ghana. <laughs> woo -woo. Antonio. Hello, hello, Antonio. Galim. Good to see you, man. Ah. We'll see you at the meet and greet in a couple weeks. So looking forward to seeing you and your wife. In Texas, right. it's 32 degrees, degrees in no. Yeah. Ooh, that sounds Atlanta. You can have is cold. all of that. Yep. You guys, it just basically sounds like everyone is saying it is. Yeah, it's cold. cold. <laughs> oh, there was a warning in uh Florida, South Florida, about iguanas, falling iguanas that after 40 degrees or something like that they they get stiff and fall off trees and fall on people so there's a iguana falling warning in south florida well that would be a first time i've ever heard that <laughs> one so. that's crazy right <laughs> that's a little bit crazy yeah, yeah you had a few spotted that you wanted mm -hmm. to take a, a moment to yes, shout out yes, today yes, yes. who are your spotted uh, let's see. First, we're going to go with Ama Salisi. Um, saw her, I think, um, at the office. She was at the office handling some business. So, okay. got a chance to see her, meet her, say hey. Um, next up was, I want to get her name right, Nemoma. Nemoma, we uh, met at a bus tour. Oh, that's right. Um, yeah. Last Nemoma. week, I believe. I like that name. Yeah, Nemoma. So, uh, hey, how you doing? Glad you were able to um, connect with the group and everything. So, um, hey. Um, then we have Neem. Neem and his family saw them at the Accra Mall. Oh, nice. I was there. Yeah. I saw you too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, saw Neem. Said he, uh, he's been uh, away for a while. Now he's back home. He retired and doing like all the great Ghanaian people do. Come back home, Come spend, back. That, spend that <laughs> retirement money here. Well, and bring your intellectual capital too. So there's yes, a lot to be yes, said about yes. going abroad and then coming back. So, Absolutely. Yeah, so. definitely. Well, uh, nice spotted for you guys, those of you guys who are out there. If you see us out and about, feel free to give us a little shout. Hey, you guys. All righty. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we have to give a quick shout out to, to Alpha Afrique. Alpha Afrique. Because she got my wife looking like a I hot school really teacher. I really like your yeah. shirt today. Oh, you! I like orange. You like orange on me, so I do. That's what you put on. I me. I do, I do, I do like orange on you. I like everything I like, on you. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Uh, it has the Janami symbol there, and the colors just pop. I don't know what it is about like this. It just pops. I like yeah, it. Yeah, it looks really good on you. Yeah. Well, so, so you know. Good. I have to give my moment too. It's like a little fashion show. I love this little. Do you know what I love yeah. about the alpha stuff is they put pockets. Yeah. On everything. I know, ladies, it's so silly, but pockets on dresses are literally my happy place. I definitely. I love. Mm -hmm. I love them so so much. Mm -hmm. So anyway, thank you. Shout out to Alpha Freak. Alpha Freak. Their thank you. Information is in the show notes below in the description box. They find them in East Legon. I'm just stepping yes. on you today. Sorry. No, They're you're all East good. Legon. Or on Instagram. Yeah. And if you see uh, their Instagram feed, you might find some familiar looking uh, models there. Uh -huh. <laughs> that was actually fun. I enjoyed yeah, that. Yeah, yeah that right. was fun. Modeling. So, <laughs> so thank you very much, Alpha Freak. All right, let's get back to the comments real quick. All these people telling me it's cold. It's cold, cold, cold. In the 30s in Florida. Oh, wow. Yeah, you can have that. Yes. Um, My brain. I discovered you now in November. Well, here it is, January, and you're still hanging with it's us. So Thank good. you. Thank you. Uh, Brian, first time with us. Welcome, welcome. All right. Mama's bees knees. Hello. Hey, How you doing? <laughs> good to see you. Cheryl said it's true about the iguanas. That's really a story? 
Yeah, yeah. That's the craziest thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think I would freak the if I were just standing around and an iguana wow, fell yeah. out of the sky. Just bow right on your head. <laughs> they said they're not dead. You know, they're just. Will they come back to life? Or yeah. I mean, if they're frozen and, then... and they fall, they're just freezing to death, right? Like no, they're, on they're their not. Way. They're not. They're just going into like their reptiles so they go into like a slumber or something i don't know oh my gosh that really just sounds really horrible mm. <laughs> antonio says his girlfriend and her mom are still in our cross so we'll say hi to them all right Hello. brian says he became regulars because they love how we come through with um attitude, attitude glances and body language between you two well it's all natural it's all just love it's love it's this mad love, love. Looks like. mad love mad love actually i do um most of the time yeah, yeah like that's yeah i mean like marriage you know, maybe 50% of the time I want to kill you and the other 50% of the time I really love you. So I think that's good balance. All right. If I come <laughs> up missing. <laughs> I will cry on the next feed. <laughs> and so he says he loves the dress. Thank you very oh, much. Yeah. I do actually really dig the colors on this dress. Mm -hmm. And Watson, yes, pockets, right? Pockets. Pockets on <laughs> All right. Hello, Tony and Ayo. Ayo, greetings from Houston. Hey, I miss Houston. You miss African Sun. You miss Ghana Perry. Ah, tell you what, make a deal with you. I will box up some of this African Sun if you can <laughs> send me one of those turkey legs from Turkey Leg Hut. OMG. <laughs> the one with crawfish rice, please. <laughs> Mary Ella's with me on the pocket. Oh. Miss Bees loves the dress. Yes. And even if you guys do not talk about anything, it's all right. You are lovely together. Oh, thank you, Ernest. Yes, we appreciate yes, thanks, that. Thanks, Ernest. We, we do. We do actually have some stuff to talk about yeah, today. Yeah, some very important stuff we want to get into. Yeah, it was kind of a crazy thing that uh, maybe it was just a week ago. Was it just a week ago? In the, it's not even it, a week. It was not even a week. It was, it was like just this Monday. Week. <laughs> just this week. But it seems like Monday we, was like two weeks it, ago. It actually does. We saw this post come through related to this article and i actually read this article I don't and know. it was like confusing right no it it read like a legit article it had quotes from the right people and but none of it was legit so upon reading it though you wouldn't have known that yeah, right so right. upon reading it it was like oh no mm -hmm. we're really gonna have to have mandatory travel insurance in order to move around Oh boy, that yeah. got everybody, yeah, everybody was like, why? <laughs> but it, you know, with with all the uh, COVID things still going on, and you're paying, you know, for this test, that test, thirty times for one trip, people are like, wait a minute, now we got to pay e even more for something that we really don't need. Well, I mean, in most people. Was upset. Yeah, most people who get, who want travel insurance and decide to get travel insurance will get it in their home country right? Um, prior to departing. And for a lot of travel insurance companies, there's a limitation to how long you can be abroad with that travel insurance mm -hmm. and still qualify as traveling. You know? like, <laughs> so there are limitations to that. And it felt like if you want it, you can get it yourself. You don't have to be forced to get it unless this is another fee like yep. maybe like the fee we're getting right now to renew our visas again. yep i do not like it though yeah this whole every 90 days as um as part for the course having to go in and renew the visas for the fee for all four of us in the family yeah we don't like that well and it's it's not just the fee it's now that they're asking us to do a covid test at every renewal so every 90 days as foreigners were getting the COVID test protocol yeah. with the COVID test fee every 90 days, mm -hmm. even if we're negative, even if you're vaccinated, even if you no matter have been in the country for the last 90 days and you've not left. So thoughts about that one? I do not like it at all. <laughs> That's at the all. best I'm going to get from you, huh? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, well, you know, my, my take is that um there's there's already so much that we're paying to travel back and forth just it, this just goes to show that people are not ready to pay for 
you know, another fee or another anything yeah. on top of what they're already doing. It's, it just seems excessive. So I'm glad that this isn't, you know, this was not true and that, you know, we don't have to worry about that because that will interrupt some travel, I believe. Yeah, that was definitely a thing, right? So we saw pretty soon after that the um, news story cycle kind of changed up a bit and there was a release that was issued from mm -hmm. the National Insurance Commission kind of letting everybody know that this is not in place. Yeah. But what I actually thought was interesting was the language that they used didn't really say like, this is something that's never going to happen. Like we would never do anything no, like no. this. It, it kind of seemed like uh, they were testing the waters, you know, <laughs> hey, let's just throw something out there and, and not back it by anything and see if there's pushback. There's no pushback. Yes. I'm glad there was pushback. Yeah. So that was it, right? Mm -hmm. Like it was, it was literally one of those situations where it felt like between the article having accurate quotes or quoting the right people and it could have right. been completely fabricated. But then the release, not outright being more specific or just right. saying, hey, don't worry, not happening. There, it, it didn't have that line that I was looking for, which is there are no plans to inst implement yeah. mandatory travel insurance. I was right. looking for that line and it did not have that line. So, yeah, this felt a little bit like. It was testing the water. Test run. I agree with you 100%. Mm -hmm. And I did not like the sound of that. Hey, so. Uh, be ready today. Be ready. How are you? Thank you so much. <laughs> um, we appreciate you giving us support. That Absolutely. is much appreciated. Thank we you very much. Thank you for the love. And a couple of people are popping in here every every 90, 90 days yeah every, 90 90 days yeah so for those of you who are planning your return or maybe who are already here when you come in on your very first stamp of the passport you get 60 days on that visa and only 60 days mm -hmm. we actually went and yeah. came back and it was like oh 60 days because we yeah, were so we, in we like 90 to the 90 90 90 <laughs> then it's like 60 like oh wait two <laughs> days before yeah, it caught, caught us a little bit by surprise. Mm -hmm. So yes, um, and then after that, you get 90 day renewals that you can do three times max, and you have to have like a good reason to do it. You can't just just be like, oh, I just want to stay over. <laughs> um, so yeah, now we're doing COVID tests four times a year, just for visas, not including yeah regular travel. I don't like that. Yeah, and then they they um, they set up a testing center for these, and it's just I should say a, a testing center, not testing centers, a testing center in Accra. <laughs> it's such a pain to get to. There's no, there's no, it's like there's no convenient parking and the traffic. Yeah. They don't make it easy for you. Not at all. There's so many testing facilities. It feels like, I, can't I just go to the one by the airport or the one down the road? Or Control. They have to control the yeah, revenue. Yeah, well, so I'm not really feeling that one. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, let's jump back into the comments. Um, there's a nor'easter happening. The Bronx might get 6 to 12 inches of Holy speed. Cow. I don't miss those days. Yikes. Quick, who's laughing? I'm, I'm assuming. <laughs> Quick, are you here? Is that right? Mm. <laughs> laughing, laughing. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, greetings from Queens. Okay. We have your Marlon. You both are so funny and real. Yeah, she's funny. All right. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, Antonio's back. How long does it take to renew a visa to come to the U.S.? Uh, Wait, to come to the U.S.? Um, we have, is our visa three years or five years? Three? I think the current one that we're using is a 36-month visa. Yeah. And that one we can renew from here at the American consulate. So we won't actually have to like go back 
and then return to get our appropriate visa, you can renew at the consulate here. Mm -hmm. Actually, the consulate services allow you to get um, updated yeah. passports if you run out of pages. Um, if it's about to expire, you can renew it there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they there? yeah they offer a lot of services just for convenience if you're around. So mm -hmm. that's good. Definitely, they're making a killing off COVID testing at each it's immigration renewal, even if you're vaccinated. They're just making a killing off of COVID, period. <laughs> I am so ready. But you know what this is? This is our two-year anniversary of COVID that we, we got sick. I mean, should we tell that story? <laughs> yeah. You guys want to hear a story? This is, yeah, this is that. It is actually. When we got COVID for the first time two years ago. Yeah, so two years ago, we were on vacation with a lot of international travelers before COVID was COVID. And a bunch of people around us got really very sick. sick. <laughs> really sick. <laughs> and then we all got <sighs> really sick. Really yeah. sick. Yeah. So. I mean, like, you remember Luke was so sick. We just <laughs> we were like, okay, well, buddy, we're gonna give you some food, your room service number, yeah. and we're gonna go out because <clears throat> we don't want to be trapped here with you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I just felt bad. And Leo got it. The, the, his fever oh, just would fever. not break. I actually was really worried about him and that mm -hmm. fever. I was like, yo, we're going to have to do something here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, we all got it kind of before it was a thing. Yeah. Yeah. We were looking on the cruise ship, hearing them talk about COVID, and we're like, oh, well, it's not here. <laughs> yeah. Little did we know. Well, yeah. It was it, cruising with us. It feels like there were people, I mean, like there were little pockets of it, people Some talking people. about it, but not really like us, right. the the massiveness but yeah with all of the come into place afterwards it really is a lot of money that's been generated in the name of covid here in ghana mm -hmm. but not really with the massive number of yeah. uh cases that yeah. benefit and, from and and now with the new omicron variant you know it's like people are getting less sick um, right. It's not as severe, even though it's spreading more, but you know, the severity is is not as severe. So we don't wanna yeah. keep doing this if the the this strand of COVID is getting less. You, you wanna right. stop doing so so many testing, so much regulations. Well, I actually went and I pulled up the um the chart. Mm. <laughs> so here's a handy dandy little image for you guys. Well, let's see this. I was surprised, like really, really surprised to see this last huge spike. And even with that huge spike, you can see that the daily reports mm -hmm. were really not as, I don't think, as high as a lot of other places. Yeah. Um, and that the spike is completely, like we're, we're past that, mm -hmm. that fourth wave, and according to this. Uh, and uh, if you look at like the time, the timing of it, mm -hmm. that was holiday, and that then, big spike. Yeah. And so it's like 250,000 people come in to Ghana during the yeah. holidays so, from abroad. So I can understand that spike. But even on that, looking at the numbers, that 1.4 thousand, still pretty low. Yeah. So, it's, I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, the states are talking about tens of thousands of new cases, new cases a day. And, you know. <laughs> Here we are in Ghana, almost 2,000, almost. Yeah, it does seem like the cases have been consistently pretty low here. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have had people that we know get COVID uh, yeah. and have symptoms and the whole bit. Uh, we even, we know someone who got COVID. We think we all got it again mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> a couple months ago. Over and done with in two, three days. You yeah, know? it was about four days. It was yeah. about four days. But uh, I just wonder if the severity without with the severity not being quite so bad with us having had it once before, you know, I, I wonder about the real purpose of having us go and take these mandatory tests every 90 days. Like what, I guess, like, what's, what's the what, outcome? Like what happens if we test positive? What are you going to do? Kick us out? I don't. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I, I don't get it. I really like, I really don't get it. So that is me with that one uh, um so someone said it has another reason to bring in the costs um make a kill off that covid oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah 
playing trouble with God. I said, hold on, what are you waiting for? Ernest Luciana. thinks maybe the release was a little vague. It means it might be in the pipeline. Oh, yeah, I think so, too. What does that even look like, mandatory travel insurance? As a protection for... No, it's like, for, for what? Why? <laughs> I don't even want to think about it. Cause it's <laughs> like, And then it's like, okay, something happened. And then, like, as I read that thing, it was like three insurance companies. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, something happened. It, oh, call this guy. They're saying, oh, no, no, don't call us on this. You got to call the other guy. It's like, <laughs> I don't even trust. You don't trust at all. It's very interesting. I can't even begin to think about trusting mandatory insurance coming here. Well, that, what, what I actually thought was really interesting was I saw a quote or statistic attached to one of the articles I read that said that um, Ghana is aware that they're behind the, the global average of people carrying insurance. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Where it's like, everybody else has insurance all over the rest of the world. Why don't we, we, we need to get more people to have insurance here. And that's kind of how they were trying to. It's, it's like, why? I don't know. Because uh, <laughs> it's just free money. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, Be Ready wants to know, what happens if you test positive? We're actually going to talk about that a little bit later. So hold that uh, question oh, yeah, yeah. and stay, stay with tuned. us. Is there a way to avoid the 90-day test? Yes, there is. If you don't renew and you leave and come back, but then you still got to take the test when you leave. So not really. I'm sure there's a person to bribe somewhere out there in the world. We don't know who it is. Yeah, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to say, stop what you're doing, hit the like bell, the like um, button, like button, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Don't that make was... fun of me. Don't make fun of me. Don't. don't. It's late. It's because I love you so much. <laughs> yeah. <that I> won't. <laughs> mm. uh, Muriela says they're hoping that some things change with, um, with this mandate. mandate. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, you can experience it through us, uh, but you still have to come. <laughs> If someone wants to come to the U.S. from Ghana, do they need to go to the U.S. Embassy to get documents to come here? Yes. yes. If if you say somebody, do you mean a Canadian citizen oh, right. or an American have, citizen? It'd be a little more specific on that. Yeah, it, let us know and we Who's will. Who's the someone? Yes. <laughs> this is just mean. <laughs> no snow in Ghana ever. You're right. We love that. <laughs> You know, I see people when it cools here a little bit, you know, dropping five degree drop. You know, I see people Eskimo. I'm like, whoa. We Come were, on, man. We the store and they were selling like the fleece. winter fleece line parka. I was like, who who wears those? Where? Where, where would you wear them? And then I'm them? thinking maybe it's somebody who works in like a freezer. Freezer. <laughs> yeah, in the cooler at uh 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 grocery store or something i mean i i you got me on that one so uh, I, this is funny uh, because we're, we're sitting here saying stuff and i hear the kids cackling in the background i hope you guys can't hear uh, the boys still up who need to go to sleep yeah, this, anyway I'm gonna yell now. <laughs> hey good job to sleep. You know. we're gonna have to play a little commercial so we can yell at them real loud yes, that's what we have to yes, do okay we have to do that. is it difficult to get residency here we have a video about this exact topic, so definitely check that out. Mm -hmm. There are four paths to citizenship. You can uh, do it by blood, you can do it by stay, mm -hmm. you can do it by marriage, and you can do it by adoption. Mm -hmm. And those are the four ways. And each of those ways carries a different level of difficulty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But from my experience, yes, it's not easy. Yeah. Even by blood. Even by blood, yeah. Because I'm by blood, and it's been taking. I. <laughs> yeah, and this, this. Remember, we talked about that new uh, process to uh, streamline uh, residency and have everything in one place. I'm still waiting on that to roll out. Huh? I can't, and I, it's been so long. I can't even remember. The uh, name they called it. it. Maybe somebody in the comments will be able to. Yeah, it had some some catchy name. Um, well, it is very but, difficult when you're an expat coming in. They have the diaspora and affairs office. They have some 
some communities and some services already kind of set up, but they're not streamlined mm -hmm. and they're not easy to find or easy to navigate. So it does make it a little bit more challenging uh, when you're trying to move here. Okay. All right, we are going to pop in and give a little subscribe roll. Hi, I'm Leo. Subscribe right now. Anyway, let's get back into it. Oh, Kali, do Kali. We had one more kind of uh, similar question to kind of put up here. Do you actually need travel insurance when you're coming to Ghana? Like, if you're coming to vacate in Ghana, or take vacation in Ghana, should you just have it? I'm going to let you answer that. Wow. Hey, what happened? That Where's was the me. people? They're still there. Oh. Don't worry. Just keep talking. People? <laughs> uh, well, for me, this is like one of those things where I'm like, no, you really don't. Um, I think I think it's for those worry people, you know. Really? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's a good like in general. Do you think travel insurance? I guess the thing for me that you need to know about is actually more so to this question: what you should expect <laughs> from your healthcare here. Mm -hmm. Isn't that the like? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think. Um, I think it's more of. Okay, I know what is here, but it, it, as far as insurance, I know what is here as far as insurance. How how service wise am am I going to get service? You know. Yeah. It, I think that's don't the thing don't is... don't make me spend money on something and and me expect you know okay I'm getting insurance and then you go. To use Cordova. it, and it's right. like they send you to Cordova. Really? This is what I paid for. This is what you're making me pay for. So, it, my thing is, if you're going to make somebody pay for it, then you might want to have, you know, a a product that they want to buy, a product that they will have some kind of uh, insurance that it's it's worth it. Yeah, I. I get what you're saying with that one. And the thing is, is that for me, emergency services here are so bad. Mm -hmm. I'm just really curious, like what would but, the insurance okay, But okay, do? let's say, okay, you're worry freak. So, <laughs> okay, something happens. You got insurance, but you still got the same service. So it doesn't really matter. You got insurance. <laughs> like, you have insurance, you're still gonna get the same, same bad health care. Right, it's, so it's like, Maybe it's just like a catastrophic. Maybe. Would you would you suggest travel insurance for catastrophic things like your ulcer, your appendix bursts, and you need emergency services back to your home country, like that? Or you you do something crazy and you die, and you want to get your body back to the states? I guess it's all it's. It's yeah. all on you, right? But you don't, I don't. I yeah, if I'm on people, vacation and I die there, hey, you know what? It was meant for me to die there. I'm good. <laughs> all right. So there you go. That's that's Tony's take on that one. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, someone is saying that they believe they stopped the vaccine mandate here. Yeah. What they did was they altered. Um, what do they do with the vaccine mandate? You don't have to get it or have the vaccine, but you do have to, when you come in, do uh, um, quarantine. Yeah, they, they, they did delay parts of this a little bit. So maybe that's what you're thinking yeah, in terms yeah. of, is it? Yeah, because when they initially came out with this mandate, it was like in December. Yes, like right December twelfth, yeah, and they were like, "Well, people weren't ready for it, so I think they pushed back enforcing it until like I think this weekend, the twenty eighth or 29th mm -hmm. or something like that." It was just like this that. weekend. So, um, so they updated the travel advisory just this week, right? So they didn't stop it; they just it de delayed enforcing it. Yes, we're actually going to take a look at what the <laughs> what the protocol is right now. So we can address that question if you'll hold with us just a little bit. Somebody else was saying they were on a cruise in 2019. Mm, yeah. Totally did. 
Um, so Cheryl has a random number. She said, what are the chances of people over 65 with $40,000 in income retiring here? No what, I, I don't get what are the chances of people. Yeah, you're going. good. Is that like the success ratio? You'll be fine. Well, I, yeah. I mean. If you spent, if you took that money and you spent $1,000 a month in rent um, to t- take that down by 12000 what was left over, you'd be completely fine to do food and travel and entertainment. Yeah. Um, the, I think the deal breaker is the level of healthcare you need. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Getting older, you, you, uh, you want to have more healthcare. Yeah. I think that's, and you want it to be of quality. So I think that's something to really think about. Cheryl, <laughs> Brian says he also wants to know the answer to that question. So yes, 40,000. Yeah. You can do it. Uh, Black Hannah wants to know, do you guys do a book one-on-one session for consultations with expats. You are thinking about starting doing that, aren't you? Right. We are in the process now of starting a consult referral uh, thing. Don't quite know how to package it yet, but um, if you got questions, email me. Um, <laughs> Expat Live Ghana. Uh, you can just go to the website. Yeah, and just go to yeah, whatever. whatever on the website. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think that's yeah, something we, we people are, keep asking. Yeah, so. we are starting to formulate something to uh, help. It's weird because people ask for this stuff. Mm-hmm. I think when we first started, when we came, we did not anticipate doing all those things. Yeah, that was like, <laughs> oh. And now we know it's like, well, yeah, we know how to roll like this. So yes, definitely. <laughs> Rochelle, hey. Hey, back. Hey, back. Hey, y'all. <laughs> Um, someone's saying the government said that they don't have any hand in this global insurance issue and has asked that insurance company to stop immediately. Yes, we put up that press release just a little bit ago. So thank you for pointing that out, Mm -hmm. that it is in fact inaccurate reporting for that. Um, my, it's my girlfriend and mother-in-law who are coming from Ghana to New York city to where they'll stay, stay for a little while. Yes, it can be really challenging. Antonio, if you have Ghanaian girlfriend and their parents to get uh, the visas and approvals. It was worse under Trump, but it's still pretty bad now. Yeah. Like it's not, it's not <laughs> easy, streamlined or fast. No, it's, it's going to take you a while to get it. Yeah. Be patient. It, and there's going to be some things that you, uh, they'll have to provide and get everything taken care of in order to get that done. So just be ready for that. It'll yep. be a little bit of a rigmarole. <laughs> Hope you're not too late. No, yeah, late. we're still here. <laughs> Antonio, how much insurance do you need for two people? Hmm? Uh, Maybe none. Uh. Hello, Newark. <laughs> All right. Cold store workers at the fishing harbor. Yep. Yeah. Those are the guys who went to close. That too. <laughs> there you go. That, now we know who's buying fleece jackets in Ghana. <laughs> Those jackets were not cheap, though. Like, no, they weren't. <laughs> I, I guess. Maybe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, okay. Nerdy Girl Travels. Hey. Uh, travel nice insurance you. usually is for catastrophic events where you need to be airlifted somewhere. Yeah. Yes. Stanlow says, how about Luca Health? Ah. Uh, we don't even know about that place. Just kidding. Mm, One of our faves. <laughs> do you like them? I like Luca Health. I do. Um, and they have, we did a, a video about them and our experience inside. If you want to take a tour of uh, the Luca Health, uh, is it clinic or hospital? It's hospital, right? They do surgery there. So I think yeah. it has to be hospital. We take a look inside their surgery wing, show you what the, the operating room looks like. So check out that video. But mm-hmm. Luca Health has some really quality health care right, that they provide. I'll, st- I'll stand by the uh, level of service they provide. I'll- Oh, I'll vouch for. Yeah, because we did experience the opposite of that, and it it was scary. Uh, Dude, I mean for real, <laughs> they went to go. Exam- <laughs> they went to do an exam, uh, and the guy pulled out one of those like foldy curtains, but didn't even cover you. It was just like he pulled it out like an inch, yeah. and then it told you to sit on a table that was. I was like, yo. That was clean twenty years ago, maybe. I was it, like, yo. It was. This is not Luca Health. This was not Luca Health. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. This is not. They're like, yo. So, so then when you went to Luca, you were like, oh. I was like, yo. 
<laughs> How the other place don't know about this place? That was stressful. <laughs> that was definitely stressful. <laughs> Cheryl says she takes Kung Fu lessons weekly. Go on, girl. All right. Pretty. Hey, how are you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, um, thank you, Tony and I. We need your help to become gracious expats. Yes, you do. We'd be glad to help you out. <laughs> All right. I'm going to have to wait until they have left the COVID mandate. Yeah, the COVID mandate. Do you yeah. think they're going to lift that? Like, how long do you think we are all away from I, and lifting you know what? these mandates? Looking at um, um, African countries, it's like the endemic. I've heard that term used where it's a different phase of the of the virus and it's like the end phase right. or whatever. So um, eventually it's going to have to stop. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm looking at things happening in the States with they're they're trying to end the mass mandates and trying to get, you know, uh, everybody's still to mad. get away from it. And you think that's why we've been able to avoid maybe the severity is because people on the continent are just more, uh, they've dealt with right. viruses before mm -hmm. and have kind of like a protocol and an understanding and a social contract that really accommodates for that. Or you think it's something more? No, I think, no, no, they, <laughs> like when COVID came out, it was taken very seriously here. So wearing masks wasn't like, I don't want, I don't, shouldn't have to wear masks. Or, no, it was like, I'm wearing my mask. You ain't wearing your mask. Hey, I, I, I say nice words at your funeral. But Aww. that's kind of, you know, was the, the take here was take it serious. Well, um, somebody wants to know if you have any information about. A Brie Land sales. Brie Land sales. Yes. Um, Check out, I guess, send them to the partners tab. Partners tab. Email or email us. Um, I can. Connect you directly about a brewery land sales. Yep. And the website is www.expatlifegonna.com. So definitely com. check that out. Um, hi from Philly. Philly. Hello. We got somebody else saying hello. Hello, hello. Vicksburg, mm. Mississippi. And some other people letting us know that they've been get they've gotten travel insurance before when they're traveling. It's not that expensive. It really isn't yeah. that expensive. Yeah. Um, and Stanlow says. They keep their insurance in the Basically, U.S. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do you, I mean, you interact more with people. Do you find like a lot of your group when they have major medical concerns fly to the West or do they take care of that here? Like, do you, what do you feel like? They fly to the West. Yeah. There's a lot of people who <laughs> are, you know, um, they leave for uh, medical services outside of the country so it's yeah i feel that's like that's definitely the like a thing yeah um but, somebody is asking they heard that tema is growing fast is it still a uh great place to live Tema's no not it's grown, not it's grown yeah tema, <laughs> tema ain't growing it's it's a full-grown man now with a job with a beard and goatee and all that stuff <laughs> yeah tema's been around for a long right. long time uh what is happening with Tim is, uh, I understand what they mean by growing like Community 25 and all those places mm -hmm. that we really don't consider Tim. <gasps> People who live there are going to be shocked and, and saddened that you said that. And they're going to be like, yeah, I know what you mean. Take me 45 minutes just to get to Barbie Lounge. You know what was terrible was I feel like 10 or 12 years ago, the promise was that that, that roadway was going to be expanded. Done, yeah. And so people really worked on an and invested in developing along the road and beyond. And here we are a decade later, and it's like, the road. You have to fix the road. <laughs> Uh-oh. Too much like that chant. No, we don't. We, we won't be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, all righty. Uh, moving right along. Is it all too political? You yeah, yeah. Uh, just it? remember uh, who's saying what. Yes, so you, when you come you, to kick us out, you kick out the right person. <laughs> yeah, I, Don't kick out Tony. <laughs> Tony won't leave. He won't leave alone, so it's okay. All right. So someone wants us to explain more about this COVID fee when you apply to renew your visa. Um, you want to go explain ahead? more? But... Yeah. So when you apply, it used to be that you would apply and you'd fill out all your forms and you'd attach them with your passport and you would turn them over so that you could get your um, renewal. Now, when you do all that, 
they then take all your stuff and then they issue you a little piece of paper that you have to go to the COVID compliance office to be tested and have it stamped. Mm -hmm. And when you get there, they charge you. It's a 250 Ghana. I believe it is 250 Ghana, which yeah. is roughly like $40, $50. I think it must be $50 now. It might have gone up now that the exchange rate is going, but I feel like it was 50 bucks, mm. give or take. Somewhere around there, yeah. They charge you the 50 bucks to take a COVID test, and then they give you your little paper stamping and everything else, and then you are you don't have to turn it. I think it just automatically processes along with your application so that mm -hmm. you can get that all done. Every three months. <laughs> Why? Uh, hey, what can I tell you? Mm -hmm. um, so hoping to go to a brewery when they come next year. Kwame. Oh, come on. Yeah. Well, so I really do want oh, to like, uh, oh. a brewery as much. I was trying to go fast so you wouldn't see that. Kwame, 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 come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. You're going to start wars up in here and keep on, doing man. that kind of stuff. No, I'll give a brie. Hey, waking up in the morning, love it there. But better? Hmm. <laughs> All right, well, so uh, let us go over the stuff that we were promising you All right. before. So we were talking about the um, Ghana entry requirements, so kind of what that was going to look for, look like. And people were asking oh, about the mandatory quarantine. Me. So this is what we have so far. If you have, if you want to come in to Ghana, you mm -hmm. have to show that you've been fully vaccinated. And that means that you've had the one dose of Johnson & Johnson or the two doses of everything else. <laughs> then there's the list. Yeah. This is a long list. Yeah, passengers traveling to Ghana must have a negative COVID PCR test 72 hours before departure, create a Pana Bio account. That was actually really annoying. Oh, I wow. thought. Um, the trying oh, to like yeah. create the account and then if you if you'd already traveled the account was created yeah, it but was it all... didn't get updated mm -hmm. it... i didn't like that yeah it doesn't renew itself or no yeah. so if you've traveled multiple times under that same thing it's going to glitch you out mm -hmm. in like the system but if you go to an authorized testing site i think there's some automaticity in there so check out what sites are listed online if you want that to be a little easier Wow. Okay, so complete your health declaration forms. You do that online, mm -hmm. right? Yes, yes, you do that online, and it goes by a lot faster if you do it online. Well, you can wait till you get to the airport at the little kiosks, but yeah, there's it always goes a by a lot faster <laughs> if you do it online. When, you can do it on your phone at the airport um, if you hop on the Wi-Fi, so that that's helpful too. But if you do it before you get there, <laughs> it goes by a lot faster. I feel like you're really giving them an important tip here. Yep. And you have to pay for your on arrival COVID test. Um, that is actually mm. that's actually hard. I think how many people do we see in the Facebook group who've been flagged? Like that that charge gets flagged as fraud. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it's the name that's on it. Just seems like it's suspicious. I the think it, it, well, yeah. yeah. I think we got yeah uh, like. I think we had to try like four credit cards to get a credit card that would work. All mm -hmm. of them kept getting, they, yep. it, it would just come up as a fraud alert and it wouldn't, the, the credit card um, company wouldn't approve the charge. That was really annoying. Mm -hmm. You can pay on site though. Yeah. So there's that. And the last thing you need to do is take another COVID test on arrival. Another one. And that's boom, 100, boom, 150? Boom. Another one by the <laughs> Boom, boom. <laughs> Doom, doom. Another uh, test up your nose. I'm telling you. <laughs> and then once you get here, mm -hmm. you have to follow the airport protocol, mm -hmm. which does require you to wear a face mask. Yep. So if you are one of those people who's like face mask, smash, smash, is that a face mask, smash, smash, smash. <laughs> I don't know. You don't have to wear that joker when you get here. Yeah. They do a temperature test. Yep. Not just like a baby thermometer a temperature test, thermal okay. scan. Whole body. Yeah, thermal scan. Scan. Mm -hmm. And then, of course. So, Visa and yellow card. Your yellow fever card. And, uh, yeah, yellow fever card. I got to have that. Yes. And your visa. So, have all the things. You can get a yellow fever shot and you can get a visa on arrival. However, some 
airlines will not let you travel unless you can show you have those two things before you get on the plane. So keep that in mind. So here's where it gets interesting, I think. They just updated all of the travel requirements on the 25th. And you can see on here, it's listing all the things we just kind of said up at the top. It reminds you that Ghanaian citizens and ECOWAS um, citizens, they get the $50 and um, everyone else gets 150. And then of course, here in the little yellow box, <laughs> you have to be vaccinated. If you are unvaccinated when you arrive, they'll help you with that. Mm. Is that the nice way to say it? Yeah. I'm so glad that we traveled when we did. Because they sprung this. They kind of, I mean, it, it was just like, like boom, guess it. what? <laughs> I didn't actually like what they said on there. That was like, even if you're pregnant, mm. you're going to be offered the vaccine, but not the two that we know aren't approved for pregnant women, but the other ones, you'll be offered those. Yeah, I am so glad we traveled <laughs> when we did. All right, but then here's where that mandatory quarantine thing comes in, right? So if you um, if you arrive and you aren't vaccinated and you don't vaccinate, you have to quarantine for seven days mm -hmm. at your expense. Yep. So that was pretty. That like we had a lot of people who were really not feeling that one. Yeah. So. Um, the thing of the mandatory quarantine is that gets expensive. Yeah. And, you know, if you're coming in for 15 days, you had to spend half of them, 10 days. <laughs> and I, well, that would, that would be pretty stinky. Uh, but they did say, so if you, you see it says for all patients, if you test positive, you have to be isolated for a period of um, seven days. All hospitalized patients have an increased number of days that they're kind of on restriction. Mm -hmm. And then they do let you know that you have to retest during that quarantine. So you'll be tested, then you'll be quarantined, then you'll be tested again. And all of this comes at your expense. Yep. So, so I'm so glad. Because <laughs> now it's like, it's, you don't want to leave because if you leave, yeah, you'd be subject to that. So. Well, you're subject to the quarantine if you come in and you test positive. I mean, you could still have be vaccinated and test positive, and they will quarantine you. Well, I'm talking about the vaccination. Yeah, and the expense of it is the part, right? So there's no kind of like, can you show me the price? Because we've tried to look. There's there's no show me the price. So I'm not really sure how yeah. this happens. We did find someone in our Facebook group who did get quarantined, and I believe they're hotel fee was $70 per night. Wow. That adds up quick when you're here for a week. Yeah, that it does. Um, so just keep that in mind. There was one more thing on here, uh, 18 and above, and this went into effect December 12th. So for those of you who are still kind of like, is this for real or is this not for real? There it is. In black and white. Yeah, it's real. It is well, and whether it's real or not, they're gonna hold you to this when you get to the airport. So believe it or not, this is what's gonna happen. <laughs> uh, how do you feel about the mandatory quarantines? Well, I get it, I understand. But you know, and of course. I get it. I understand it. But they're just a little too much. Do you think so? Mm. Do you th I mean, do you think that mandatory quarantines shouldn't uh, happen for people I who think, are asymptomatic? Or do you feel like if you test positive, you should go back to your home country? Or if you test positive, you can quarantine, self-quarantine somewhere within the continent? Well, so, you know, other, other countries, excuse me. self-quarantine, you know, they want to see, hey, make sure you're not leaving. So I heard it's kind of at the hotels that, you know, they're kind of strict on that. They are. That's what I heard too. So um, I, I I understand it, but if you're asymptomatic, why? <laughs> I'm not really sure. Well, that's a question we're all going to have to think about. Uh, drop a comment below and let us know. What are your thoughts mm -hmm. on the mandatory quarantine, the COVID testing requirements, the entry to Ghana? requirements and the changes that have happened in the last 30 days. Well, let us know what you think. Kwame mm -hmm. says, 
that you don't agree about a brewery. Oh, it's fine. Yeah, it's we fine. like a brewery. I mean, no, I, yeah, yeah, don't get me wrong. I love a brewery. Mm -hmm. Yep. A brewery. I love a brewery. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love a brewery. But, um, but we love Tama. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so Zen says they heard about people who fly into Togo and then cross over into Ghana. We don't suggest that. We, we all, we know people who've gone into Togo to get their, I left the country stamp and come back. The problem is that now with the COVID restrictions, it's gotten a little bit harder to do right. that. So is it still a thing? Hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so James says Denmark just removed all um, cover restrictions yesterday. Mm. I'm assuming that was supposed to be COVID restrictions, but COVID, let's just yeah. say COVID okay. restrictions. And they're really considering it like a normal flu. Mm. Well, I think that's what this this latest uh, variant is. It's it's it, the COVID strand is weakening. Well, Delta is still very much out there and still severe, but I think that we are never going to get over COVID. Like COVID's not going away. Yeah, it'll be around. It's going to be a while around for a while. Um, Kwame saying that Ivory Coast and Burkina Faso are both nearby to Ghana as well. Yeah. You love the story of Tema. Yes. Yes. Uh, wow. Tema was built by Kwame Nkrumah, the first president, after he was removed from power. Other developments were stalled to date. You are right about that. It seems like since Kwame Nkrumah was president, nothing was done to the roads. And it was sad as like. You're talking about me getting kicked out. You hear yourself? They're coming for you. No, 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 no. They're not coming for me. I'm country. just making general observations. Oh, general observations. You're, you're okay. a little too specific. Oh, okay. I'll be less specific. Go ahead, general. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, um, yeah, I, I think about like places like Tema where, you know, the roads are paved because he did them. Um, nothing's been done to them since he did them. Yeah. And like the organization, uh, the, the, it was a little bit more of a systematic organization in terms of how Tema Main looks to oh, yeah. that it made oh, yeah. a little more city it's, planner yeah, kind of sense. structured very well. So. Right. So Papa wants to know mm. that he's saying greetings from Houston. Hello. Mm. Uh, don't you miss Texas? Uh, the food. That's, I, that, I mean, like, that's your answer about all of the states. Do you miss the states? I miss the food. That's what he's going to say. <laughs> no, I don't. Some states, I don't. I'm like, hey, you can keep that food. Mm. I'm, I'm not going to lie. We were at the store the other day and we found Cheetos and I almost had like a ticker tape parade in the aisle. I was mm -hmm. like, it was only one bag. There weren't any more. Yeah, we got them. We got it. I was like, yes, look at these uh, and Cheetos. And I love Cheetos, the original crunchy Cheetos. I love them. What happened when we opened this bag? They weren't Cheetos. They weren't. They were like Cheetos with one E, you know, Cheetos like Chi C H E E T O S. These were C H E T O E S. Oh, so it was like, yeah, the, dude, yeah good. they were not very good. good at all. So uh yeah, that's what you miss. I think I think I'm I, those weren't real Cheetos. The bag looked real, but yeah. So you miss food. That's really well, yeah. I'm sure all your family well, right and now, are like right now it's like, you know. Coming into Mardi Gras and uh, crawfish, crawfish is, coming. is coming. So it's like, I miss that. You miss crawfish. <laughs> I miss that, you know. So do you miss the social activities that go along with the food? Or you are just like, no, box me up a plate of South and send it, please? Yeah, just do that. Because I'm, I do miss the crawfish boils. You know, they're always entertaining. If somebody has a nice yeah. crawfish boil. But... Somebody always drinks too much. It's all good, right? Well... <laughs> Yeah. Uh, somebody from Louisiana just giving you a little shout. Say, oh, hey. thank you, homie. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. There you go. Uh, Tema is an industrial town oh, with a harbor, hospital, railway school. Yeah, you can scratch that railway thing because <laughs> ain't no trains coming through here. Well, there's a, there's technically a rail-ish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mostly back in the day, it was. We'll skip over that. <laughs> All right. So, <clears throat> too many of us were coming to Ghana. It's no telling how they're leveraging that against the president in order to make him agree to the mandate. Um, I don't, yeah, I there were a lot of people that are coming to Ghana. Mm hmm. From all different countries. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. you know, I, I don't know. So yeah, yeah. I don't know, I don't know. That was a lot of mumbling for not really sure. Mm. Uh, 
red, gold, green. Red, gold, red, green. Red, gold, green. Yeah, the colors. Yeah, red, gold, green. I like that. Both of you look so cool. Yay. Queen or husband king, Isle, your husband's shirt is very nice. Well, I know. Thank you from Isle's husband. And then you got another one. Oh, right okay. after that. You have a nice shirt. Shirt. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Alpha <laughs> Freak. I got to say, Alpha Freak. Yeah, really... you like, but this is a symbol. I see you, I see you gravitate yeah, yeah, yeah. towards the yeah. Indinkra symbols. Yeah. There's a couple in particular that you really like. Yeah, absolutely. The Sankofa um, bird is another one. You the Sankofa, have. the Aquafina symbol. Mm -hmm. I wear that. The two swords. That's the thing tinkling mm. in the That's background. That's the thing tinkling. <laughs> Do you sound say tinkling, jingling? Jingling, jingling, baby. Go ahead, baby. Tinkling <laughs> sounds like okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Samo says, "Folks, make it easy for you. CBS is a PCR test in less than twenty-four hours. They don't guarantee you, though. I'll, I think they can do it, but the guarantee it can't be made. I think they they can't guarantee you twenty-four hours. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, it is getting easier to get the PCR test stateside. Tino. Um. Yeah, Tino. We don't. We don't. We don't make comments on slogans and things like that. So, <laughs> Fix the know. road. Yeah. Uh, do you have any idea of why the electricity and water goes off so frequently? Um, it was like that before COVID. So, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, right now, uh, it's, it's Hamilton. So, uh, um, the water, they're under a reserve for the water because it's the dry hot season. And I think it's interesting that people think that it was worse before COVID, but there are more people in country than there were two years ago. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think that makes sense. The usage. Yeah, and the usage has gone up. Mm -hmm. People are trying to use all of the modern amenities. I have to tell you, I had, uh, here's like a funny story joke. Somebody at it, in the comments of one of the other videos said that when our, our credits run out on our prepaid, that we can just put it in front of the machine and we'll get another week. And I was like, you get a week off of your reserves? When I wave it and we are on the reserves, I'm like, baby, we got 20 minutes to get to the place and get some more electricity. Yeah. A week? A week. Yeah. Wow, you're doing well. So anyway, that was my funny joke for you. Mm. Um, but yes, the electricity and the water do go off here. Yeah. You can take precautions with the generator. Yeah, and, I mean, you know. Or just get used to it. <laughs> Somebody else is commenting here. Mm -hmm. Strange how fast the Europeans are dropping it. UK, US court decisions, Denmark got the memo. US hospitals can't report cases at. Oh, really? Really? I didn't know that. Well, they were trying to make a distinction between people who were in the hospital for COVID and people who were in the hospital with COVID. Mm -hmm. So those are like two different things. So maybe that's part of it. Yeah, I get it. Somebody wants you to run for. Um, Mayor of Tema. Mayor of Tema. Um, <laughs> all righty. <laughs> sounds like a lot of work. I don't know. You want to be mayor of Tema? Yeah, that, that sounds, you know, yeah, I could do that. Somebody says that um, the politics is really too much here in Ghana. It seems like a money grab. Mm. It's interesting. But, you know, I, this, this is what I think about um, politics and money. In the States, you don't really see the money and the all that and you don't see it but it's right in your face it's like every day politicians are getting over on you right in your face and you just you're like oh thank you for being corrupt um mr uh congressman uh thank you for i mean Corruption's Corruption is everywhere. You have to know what you're looking at if you want to say corruption isn't here. Well, what are you looking at to say corruption isn't here? Hmm. Tony is it, trying to make it so they won't even take him back in the States. Is that what you, is, it, is this on purpose? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So if, if, you, if you think it, corruption is here in, in Ghana, okay, fine. It's tenfold or a hundredfold or a thousandfold worse in the states you can believe that mandatory quarantine is a ripoff yes so absolutely. is it 250 COVID tests yeah which part of Accra is Eden Height Estates I have no idea 
And is there any traffic congestion in that? I, if it's I not crawl, it's it, traffic. Yeah, it's traffic. If it's going to crawl, <laughs> so yeah, it's traffic. Don't oh. need to know where it is. <laughs> somebody, it's traffic. Somebody says that they um, are going to Louisiana N- next month. Yeah, but you don't know any. You don't know any of these people, so you don't have to worry. Who, you who's been Trish? Why she doing the crawfish ball? Uh, Tell my cousin I want the crawfish. <laughs> Why you gotta make him so jealous like that? Oh, I know, mean. Tia, you are so wrong. And Trish, <laughs> Trish gets down, so yeah. Somebody wants to know what days we usually come on live. We are the uh, we're our live shows are the last Friday of every month. Yes. Have we visited the western area, re- western region already? As far we've only no. gone as far west as no. Cape Coast, so we haven't gone into Takarati and so on. Yeah, so the answer is no, and I know we'll like it because we keep getting invites out there, and really, right now our schedule is like super, super crazy. I feel like in two months, like it's going to open up a little. Like, what's it? <laughs> what's two months? Like January, but yeah, well, after February, somewhere around April. Yeah, it'll get better. We we want to accept invitations. Should I say that? Should yeah, I yeah. Say that? So if if you're out there and you're like, you need to come to this region or area um, and showcase this this part of Ghana, go to www.expatlifeghana.com. Drop us a um, message or an email, and we will add that to our working list because I think we're gonna work on a little project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It has us not sitting in. <laughs> and these seats it'll be all good what uh, do you think people should we do a live on location like God, no. like our lives should be in a different city every month that sounds like cool that sounds like internet i cannot control and electricity we can't i can't control rely internet on. here already <laughs> so it doesn't matter you know bad internet here bad uh, internet takarati yeah. I guess. No. It's, the internet has been very bad the last two weeks. I've been trying to work. It's like a week and a half. It has been a very bad internet season right now. Mm-hmm. So I, I just to put that out there. Papa is asking what time we go live the last Friday of every month at 10 p.m. Yeah. Someone wants to know if you could do a video showing the best food bar, food and sports bars in Tema. Don't hmm. encourage him. Now he's going to tell me he has to go out and do some research. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll research that for you. <laughs> I would say I'd start tonight, but I'm very tired and I'm going to bed after this live. Mariella says that there's no restrictions to go to Tanzania. She's tempted. Hey, well, explore. Well, there you go. Yeah, go go tell us how, how it was and maybe we'll connect one time and hang out there or something. Um, Sarah wants to know if we missed the Tanzania. snow. No, it's cold. Snow, cold. Like snow is so pretty. Especially when you're far in away. pictures. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you remember like outside and you're scraping the windshield? No. Uh, Bobcat said he's waiting to be accepted to the Facebook group. I'm glad you said that. Hey, when did you? You must have just did it because we keep. And Bobcat, are you one of those people who didn't accept the uh, terms of the? I think that's important. Very important. If the terms are not accepted and the questions are not answered, Tony will not accept you. He will delete you right away. So mm. if it's been a while and you can't remember if you answered all the questions, try again. He wants you to agree and be on the ups and ups. But speaking of, um, let me put it up here. Speaking of the Facebook group announcement, you having another party? We're having another party. Seems like you just had a party. No, it was like six months ago. <laughs> wow. Has We're, it been that long that we had one? It's been a, it's been a minute. Oh, yeah, it was like October. We had that last one October, but we haven't had a party one. The last one we had was like a meetup. Yeah. This one is like a party. Yeah, this is going to be a party. Tony's like throwing a party. Y'all. Yeah, I'm throwing a party. <laughs> so Saturday, February 12th. Yeah. Um, From the, 5 to 10. The location is only available in the Facebook group. Sorry, y'all. If we put the location out for the world, then the world might show up. That would be a little... Yeah. That will be a little much. Yeah. And this event will be back in Tema. That way we can party a little later and <laughs> not worry about... The last time Tony home. had the, the event in Tema, 
there was a group of you guys that went out after bar. Oh, we partied. You guys. <laughs> we partied, yeah. So there is some benefit to the Tema party, but hopefully you guys will be able to join us. If you are in Tema, um, excuse me, if you're in Ghana and you can make it, we get people who come from all sometimes over. all over yeah, just yeah. to join us for these just things. Just to join us for the... And there's a... This party's a little different too. Uh, there's a lot more happening, a lot more working parts at this party. Yeah, we got vendors coming this time. Um, couple VIP guests, couple uh, dignitary uh, oh, you're may pop to be up. Like, no, um, let's no, see. Um, there, oh, there's going to be a big table for gifts. If you want to bring me gifts, crawfish. The only will accept. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> And Cheetos. <laughs> yeah. But hey, if you are coming from the States and um, no, you want to bring me some Cheetos, <laughs> I, I was very disappointed with that bag. Can you imagine if the if the orange dust got in your suitcase? Oh, that oh, would be, that'd be terrible. Don't put, try put them in a Cheetos. Ziploc bag don't, or don't something. Don't try to first. do the Cheetos. Yeah. It'll be too much. Yeah. But yes, definitely join us for the party. Yeah, the party's going to be a party. And there's an after party to this party already. I already know you're having some crazy yeah, stuff. So, yeah, the, yeah, the after party. I won't be there. I'll be tucked in my bed with the boys. But right. you will be out all night long. Yes. <laughs> all right. So just something to keep in mind. The party is coming up. Um, and I'm going to put this little thing up for the next one. But if you didn't see there was a QR code there, just sign up for the Expat Life Facebook group. Expat Life Ghana Facebook group, um, and you'll be able to get the details. Yeah. So uh, there is that. I have a couple of questions from people. First, mm -hmm. I'm going to put out Papa. Okay. Thank you. I'll set my apart for next live event. All right. We appreciate <laughs> that. You two seem like the most happiest couple, probably couple in the world. We're probably not the happiest couple in the world, but we are very happy with each other. Most of the time. Well, she's not trying to kill me. Well, I'm not trying to kill. <laughs> All right. So we had a bunch of questions that people had sent through that I wanted to pop in. And we're going to do like a little bit of a speed round here. First one is what are boys quarters? Boys quarters is where if you are lucky enough to have somebody um, work in your house, like a housekeeper or security security. This is where they stay. This is usually a separate uh, um, um, house or building mm -hmm. um, that is apart from the main house. It usually comprises of a just like a one room living space, so like an efficiency um, with uh, kind of a separate standalone bathroom, a toilet room, and a shower room. And then if you're most most boys' quarters are two units. Yeah, two so there's bedrooms. two bedrooms. Yeah. Uh, so that you know, you have some place for your staff. Yes. And if you don't like the name Boys Quarters because it's some colonial attachment to it, I'll stop using the term when people here stop using the term. Did you get, did yes, you get I grief did. about so, it? Yeah, somebody was like, yo, the, you using Boys Quarters, that's so old. And I'm like, yo, listen. That's what they call the it. The realtor was like, yo, it has a two bedroom <laughs> Boys Quarter. I'm like, all righty. So, I mean, what would you, it's not our job to rename it. No, right? it's not. I would come up with something really creative that nobody else would want to use. So <laughs> I'm going to pass on that one. <laughs> Thank you. So boys quarters. <laughs> All right. Okay. Are you allowed to own firearms in Ghana? Why do people keep asking this question? What is it with the guns? Yo, I'm a little worried that Americans have some weird PTSD uh, uh, gun. American, and like... uh, uh, Americans have post-traumatic stress disorder. You do, you really do, and uh, I, people would like who you know. It's like why? Why? Ghana's been ranked. Kenny, let me talk to you. Look you right in the eye. <laughs> Listen, man. Ghana is ranked the number two safest country in Africa. Leave you know, your gun, really and I need my gun mentality. In the states, man, you don't need it here. Yeah. Yeah. It's just not as it's not as prevalent a thing. So, can you own a gun? Yes, you can. You have to register it and your ammunition. But why? <laughs> why? It's like it's like, like I'm gonna I'm gonna show up. This. I'm gonna show up to 
to the pool party in my Eskimo gear with all my big boots and my Eskimo parka. Why? It's not that kind of party. So that's um, Jenny's opinion on that one. Uh, we get uh, that question in the comments yeah, a lot. A lot. People asking about bringing their guns. And I just want to reaffirm what Tony's saying and remind people that there are places in the world where you don't need to have a gun to feel safe and protected. Did I answer this? Oh, yeah. Yes, you yes, can. You, you can. All right. Here's my question for you, Tony. Okay. Is open concept common in Ghana? Yes and no. Um, the way the houses are, is it's the new some of the newer houses, yes. I've I've seen yes. some of the newer houses, yes. But but the, the kitchen is almost always still kind of uh the kitchen isn't the hub like in in like houses that I've newer houses that I've seen. The right. kitchen isn't the hub, the kitchen is off to the side more, but it's still open. So yes, it's getting to be popular here. Yeah, I think but it's that's, still a little different. Uh, like in those moderner builds, they're trying to make them more a little more Western or mm -hmm. what like what American, oh, right. UK, like but for most Ghanaian homes, the kitchen is not the hub and it's it's not if you do have staff, you're you don't actually want them yeah, to be where you're entertaining. In, right. So it is so. kind of your kitchen area is a little yeah away from kind of the hus where you would put your maybe main area but with that said like dining room and living room are oftentimes connected but then the bedrooms and everything are usually a little distance away so open concept mm -hmm. is not really like i feel like that's not as yeah, popular not, here yeah. in the setup yeah. who can afford an entire year's rent mm, Ghanaians do it all the time everybody does it like I, and it's like People ask that question like, what do you think the people here are already doing? <laughs> it's like we made this up and we just started. Yeah, it's like, oh, they just started that for you guys. No, no. That's what I think. So that was our video. The last two videos we showed places that you could rent here in Ghana. And the majority of the places that we showed wanted a year or two. Yes, up two front. years rent up front. Somebody asked, so what do you take? What do they take as a deposit? And I was like, uh, the, the two oh, years. The <laughs> Um, so yeah, I, you, you still have to put away your rent money every month if that's how you choose to do it. And then at the end of the year, you pay your year that is a lump sum that maybe that's what, if you think of it that way, it's not so bad, mm. but yeah, everybody does it. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So why do all the properties there have burglar bars? <laughs> burglary bars. Is that what they're, I like that name. Thank you. Burglary, so burglary bar. bars. The burglar <laughs> bars, not burglary bars. All I can think about is the character from um, from McDonald's back in the old oh, days. Oh, <laughs> the hamburger. <laughs> Sorry, that's why I'm laughing. You remember crawling in his hamburger? Yeah, it's so crazy. Okay, I'm done. Well, you're dating Thanks. yourself talking about the hamburger. <laughs> Thank you very much for that one. Appreciate it. You're talking yeah. about, remember you used to play in the room? Uh, like, oh my God, you didn't want right. to all right. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying I was young enough to still play it. You were old enough you missed it. This is this is why our relationship works so well. <sighs> Mutual. Yeah. All, all right. right. So why do all the properties have burglary bars? You can only think of the bar. <laughs> <laughs> burglary. They have burglar bars. Um <laughs> same reason you have a lock on your door. Is that too? Yeah, I mean, elaborate I think, more. I, okay. I think people don't understand that. I, hopefully, everyone understands that it's occasionally warm or rainy here in Ghana. Mm -hmm. And the majority of people don't have an air conditioner or a, a, a unit like that. Yeah. So, okay. so open you, the windows. Open the windows. <laughs> so, when you're sleeping, your windows are wide open. When you're. Up, Even if you leave the house and you don't want to close your house up. And so you leave the windows open. So you put. And so nobody can come in while you're gone. You have burglar bars up. I'm sorry, still thinking about the hand. Kind of that, that simple. I mean, it really is. But I think people look at it and they think it's like so. Oh, I mean, you know, they have the ones that you can use that are retractable. But I can't imagine 
having the windows open in the house. And then when we have to run out for like a loaf of bread, having to go through the house and retract all of the yeah. the bars so that you can. Wow, they're blazing, Kenny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so just, just Kenny's man. like, forget y'all. I ain't coming anyway. So mm -hmm. that is the reason for the burglary bars. We're going to jump in the comments. Tony already kind of hinted at it. Um, first off, somebody called you a party animal. I am not a party animal. I am a party monster. <laughs> I'm Eric's joking. laughing. Oh, wow. <laughs> if you need guns, stay, stay home. Yeah, yeah. Kenny, it's not wise to have a weapon in Ghana. Right. Americans and their guns. Um, <sighs> You're coming. Enjoy yourself instead of the yeah, extreme. Right. <laughs> And Murphy surely has post-traumatic stress disorder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, oh, where are we at here? This thing is just in the way. Yes. It new, keeps getting... New setup here. Is it slipping? It's slipping, yes. Oh, okay. There you go. Turn okay, Ghana. You don't need a gun. The communities will always fight for you. Yes, they will. I, I would love to share a story about uh, a young man getting caught in our neighborhood. And don't. It's actually a little... The, the community like came together. I know. What is that? What is that show where the, the never mind? It's it was a little. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah. You don't. You, you don't want to get caught yeah. breaking the law. Yep. Yeah. Because the community is here. Yeah. We don't need any guns in Africa. The United States please. Don't. Why do you need them? Exactly. Bad guys have the guns. I mean, they really are. <sighs> Africa is Africa and not U.S. Yes, I know. And I think people, you know, come in here. They have this misconception about safety, and um, I, I think um, Pop said it to me best. My first trip here was like uh, I was concerned about walking in a certain area, and he was like, "Why? If if I don't I don't bother them, why would they bother me?" And he just strutted down the street and started down the street. They all a couple guys just stood up, perked up, like, "Oh, evening, sir. Evening, sir." I was like, "Oh." This is dope. But they do that to you now, don't they? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So you just have to come. It was. It was. I, I think that's just left over from. Yeah. Yeah, it's just left yeah, over. We, coming here, we have to leave some baggage to be able to accept the beauty of of Ghana. Absolutely. You know, you, you, you leave, leave that baggage alone. I agree with you. Um, it is unlawful to have a gun. James Bond, it is not unlawful to have a gun. Um, you can legally have a gun here um, if you so choose. It is a very, very hard process. And it's really discouraged because, let's say, for instance, if that gun is stolen, now you have a inexperienced person with a gun, and that just creates even more danger. So it's really not needed. It's Aww. discouraged. So yeah they have gyms here you know you can go to the gym work out <laughs> they do sell a lot of build, machetes build your confidence <laughs> <laughs> build your confidence oh dang <laughs> somebody's mm. laughing at the camera <laughs> all right okay. do you pay monthly during the deposit time i don't understand that no there's no deposit no, you when you want the house, you go to the owner of the house with your two years rent, and then you give it to them, and then you sign all your contracts and they give you the keys. Oh, oh, I want to answer the next question that I just saw. Okay, which one? This one? No, no, not that one. This one? That one. Uh oh. Okay. Uh open kitchen is not our thing because some of our traditional cuisines <laughs> have strong scent. That's why. Prudence. You got a point there. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, something about that castrated goat. I was he like, he totally said that out loud. I was like, okay, I can't eat that. What does that smell? Oh, oh, that's the good goat. It is. I'm the good like, goat. yo, the same reason why I don't eat chillings. Gross smelling, gonna be grossy. People are about to go nuts in the comments that you said that. I know. You don't eat the castrated goat or chitlins. I don't need to tell this for sure. I'll, I I either go soup, but sometimes I'm like, yo, what is that smell? <laughs> I'm like, and I'm looking around like, y'all don't smell that. I'm like, it's coming from the kitchen. <sighs> oh my 
Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the Catherine. Go. Yeah. So uh, that's I, the line in the kitchen sand. So if you are considering an open concept kitchen, also consider the status of your goats. And yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so no open concept. Yes. Prudence. Not great opinion. point. Yes. Hello. Do you bank in Ghana or do you keep uh, your banking in the U S yes. And yes. Yes. And yes. And I believe that's, the best course of action. Yeah. Uh, come to Ghana to have fun. Yeah. N- not Having to have a gun. Nice, yeah. Ingrid's reminding us that burglar bars are in most homes in New York. Yeah. Try um, the south side of Houston, third or fifth ward. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's, yeah, it's I, not a new thing. It's right. not uh, it's really not. Uh, uh, unheard of, you know, burglar bars. Um, Luciana says she felt safe when she was here last year, mm-hmm. and the people oh, were yeah. very loving. And I'll let you read what yes. <laughs> to say. The most brown coat blue is correct. The most dangerous thing in Ghana is quite literally the roads. Not much else to worry about. Just be smart. Absolutely. Um, the roads, <laughs> the roads, the roads. Um, the driving. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah you know. It's, yeah. Yeah. I. I I got this thing that if more Americans were to come and they had guns, road rage shootings would be a thing here. So keep your guns there. Cause... <laughs> yeah, I don't think we'd want that. There's no! Like, there's enough rage on the roads without having a uh, firearm oh, added to the mix. Yeah. All right. So uh, we have a couple more questions. Uh, this one is coming from Tyson. Tyson, what are the rural areas like in Ghana roads, housing, cost? Well, hmm. the roads are well, uh, some roads actually because they're are. less traveled are in pretty good condition. Or some of them are like little dirt bike molehills that you're just going mm. along. And some of them are like four road challenge day. <laughs> Let's go. So, yeah, we were just coming back from somewhere. And I literally am holding on. And it was just up. I mean, it was. Yeah. Oh, the roads. Yeah. So it will just depend. Um, rural areas too. It, the roads are not quite as wide. Some of mm-hmm. them are very bumpy, and some of them get the, flooded out. Yeah. Quite a bit when the when the rainy season comes. Yeah. The cost of, of living in rural areas is is a lot less than than uh, being in a the populous city. So absolutely, yeah. and that includes in housing. So mm-hmm. that was a good question. Yeah. What are your thoughts about expats working in Ghana? Um. We always try to encourage people to come here and build businesses because coming here looking for a job, you know, you're taking a job from somebody who is already here who could use that job. So when it comes to competition between somebody from the West and somebody here, the person from the West will more than likely get the job because they're from the West. And but you so, will not get paid your Western right. ideal salary. Yeah, so keep so. that in mind. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, honestly, the best course of action is to generate income in the United States that you can then use living here in Ghana. So, or yeah. come here, see all the opportunities, start a business, yeah. employ some people. You have to have a bit of a budget to be able to take the time to do that. You're not going to come here see something on the first day that you're here and then start up an effective business inside of six months with staff and everybody trained and everything. So if you want to do that and you got the money, visit the website, give me a call. We got some business (laughs) ideas for you. All right. That works. Mm -hmm. Um, Emlyn says you seem to love Ghana. Are your kids thriving too socially, emotionally, and academically? My kids are crazy. So socially, emotionally, academically, it's hard to judge because they're a little off. <laughs> That's not funny. So, no. <laughs> I don't even know if I should yell them again. Are you boys oh, sleeping yet? Up. Go back. Go to sleep. Anyway, sorry. Um, yeah. If you, uh, if you have kids and you enjoy the American way of uh, using parks and recreation and a very child centered life. Ghana does not do that. Like it, we take, take care of our kids. 
um, very strong family unit, but like the, the family unit isn't about the kids. So yeah, they don't pay bills. <laughs> so it is different having kids in Ghana than it is, you know, having and raising kids in the States. I think that's fair. Is that fair? Yeah, absolutely. All right. This question got me. I had to put this one up here on purpose. When you are in the States, you seem to spend a lot of time in majority white dominated localities like Wisconsin. Have you ever been to or lived in Atlanta, D.C., Chicago, Memphis, Raleigh, or Richmond? Let me handle that one. Okay. So white dominated localities, Wisconsin. Yo, you ever heard of a place called Milwaukee? Because it's black. It's, it's, <laughs> it's black. Ain't nothing white. Cream, off-white, alabaster. Ain't nothing white about Milwaukee, bro. Oh, MG, he so, all of that in <laughs> <laughs> So let's get that out there. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, uh, I actually looked it up because I was curious uh -huh. about the the blackest cities in America. Uh -huh. And Milwaukee is number 38. Actually, it's number 38 right behind Raleigh, which she listed on her. So yeah, I so yeah. That was <laughs> um, yeah, so um, I was born and raised in Milwaukee, so that's why. And yep. you, you were you uh, lived in Well, and Wisconsin I was born in Atlanta. I see you listed there. Um, I have also lived in New York City, which is the number one blackest city, right? Um, Chi Town. Chocolate city. You lived in, I lived in Chicago for a yeah. while. Yeah. Houston is number six on the list, and we yeah. both lived in Houston. So we've lived in we lived in Boma. Wow, that that was a little less minority. No, I lived in Wisconsin Dells. That was a lot less oh, minority. Yeah. So my here's here's my take on this one mm -hmm. is that um, the continuation of her question, I think, was do we feel any differently when we're in majority black cities versus majority white cities? And what I think is really interesting about that question is that even in a lot of the cities that she listed, representation in terms of government, in terms of high paying jobs, in terms of CEOs of companies is still majority, majority. Mm. So it it's not like you go to these cities and it's the... It's a black takeover, right? No, it's, it's not like it's this not, safe zone, you know, or it's, it's, yeah, the majority are still in control. Yeah, I mean, I was working in a school district that was majority minority, minority. but the majority of the decision makers were majority. So, I I still feel like mm, even in those places, do you really? Is it that you just feel like you have more people to identify with or that you're valued appropriately? Thoughts? Yeah. You agree with what you're, I said? You're very eloquent. <laughs> so, uh, I don't think I could add anything to it. <laughs> All right. Well, so here's the next question. I thought okay. this was so funny. Yeah. So uh, it was a comment in <laughs> one of the videos last week. And uh, it was like, is Tony working for some company now? What's with the logo on his shirt? Here's the picture. <laughs> I thought it was really funny. So for a couple of years now, Eric, we've been running this Expat Life Ghana logo. But because I put it on my shirt, <laughs> kind of threw you off there, man. You know, like you look so official in the shirt with the logo on yes. it. You look very nice. Yes. Well, thank you. Why do you have these shirts? Why do I have these shirts? You just walk around the grocery well, store. Well, Eric, don't... I just like walking around with polos with <laughs> logos on them, apparently, uh, <laughs> to look like I'm working for... The... No, uh, Expat Life Ghana is now uh, doing <laughs> other things. So, uh, Expat Life Ghana Tours, Expat Life Ghana Travel. Um, Expat Life Ghana is a brand that we are expanding and uh, we got our tours going on right now. Um, so that would explain the shirt. You know, we want to look professional. Um, Tony's workers have a uniform. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Gee, I just thought it was really funny because it's literally the same logo that's in the corner of the video. <laughs> I, I couldn't figure out how. You missed it. <laughs> I, uh, interesting. 
but yeah, uh, I do really like that shirt. All of your workers do wear. Like yes. you, you wear the shirts. I say all of your workers. There's not like a ton of them, but you wear Whether the shirts. There's, there's a couple of us. Yes. So if you're interested in any of the services, uh, visit mm-hmm. expatlifegonna.com. You did a pickup actually not that long ago and you got to wear uh, one of your shirts. I feel like it makes you stand out a little bit when you it get out there. It does. It does. And I wore the, I wore the, um, there's another shirt. Mm-hmm. This is the polo, but you have um, an Afro fabric infused. Yeah, I have a kente type uh, polo or shirt that we wear for um, uh, engagements, I would say. And um, that one is really nice. Maybe I'll wear that one day. Wear it on the, so that so that he can see it and ask us again. Yeah, I'll oh. wear it on the other one. Like, <laughs> oh, oh Tony's a boss. Now I went from a polo to a collared shirt. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, so, so yeah, do go visit the website, check out the tours and all that. Um, yeah, I promise you, promise you, promise you, our tours are a little different, um, because of the personal touch we put on them. And, um, we're just in tune to people coming in that we kind of got to know what people are looking for. And yes, absolutely. The personal touch, man, personal touch. And that You'll QR code it. on the screen right now is for the Facebook group that you need to be in so that you know where the party is happening. Again, the meet and greet party is coming up on February 12th. I 12th almost February. Said, I almost said November 12th. <laughs> it was a little weird. February 12th is coming up. So use that QR code, scan to get into the Facebook group. That way you know what the details are and you can join us live and in person. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, that's going to be fun. So, yeah, I thought that was really funny with the um, logo on your shirt. I will make that go away now so that we don't have to keep looking at it. Last chance. Uh, uh. Oh. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Want to thank Alpha Afrique again for the amazing clothes. And yes. you guys can see, I love this one because it has pockets. Oh, yeah. Cuts a nice dress. I feel oh, like, yeah. Yeah, it's, you it's know, nice on you. Anyway. Um, yes, so definitely check it out. Ready to wear off the rack. They also ship worldwide. So if you are not in Ghana and you can't make it physically to the store, check them out on Instagram mm-hmm. and try ordering to wherever you are yes. in the world. And and even being off the rack, they make you. I would stand up. So I got this. Yeah, you're you're mic'd up pretty good. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> things are just you know I uh, lean forward. And, uh, really nice cut shirt. You know, it's almost like a tailored shirt for me and. The colors are popping. The design is popping. The Genami uh, uh, symbol there is just, you know, you see it they everywhere. They do a lot of the stitching. I, like, I feel like the guys' shirts have a lot of details. A lot of detail. Yeah. The shirt, so. And the white, I don't know if you can tell, but the white has a little pattern on it. A stitched pattern on it. A stitched pattern. Yeah. So, I mean, the shirt just detailed, just crazy. Really nice. Really nice. Absolutely. Uh, oh, wait. Oh. Or somebody's inviting me to a party. Oh, did it say? Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, Tony, I'm oh, inviting Prudence. you to the Volta. Hey. Okay, for cat party as well as dog party. In the... I don't know what that means. Is that like code yeah. for something? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yo, I had to call somebody cat party, dog party. I don't, I'm not sure. Aw, bring your businesses to Ghana and employ expats in your businesses? Aw, no. No, yeah. You want to do that? Prudence, have you been to a brewery? And yes. Tamara says, alabaster. <laughs> alabaster, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can tell I was a contractor. <laughs> uh, I know all my white colors. Uh, Bronco says, I came over and used your airport pickup service with Elliot. He drove us around quite a bit on my last visit, and I still keep in contact with him. Elliot, that, Elliot Elliot's is. Elliot's the bomb. I know. I've known Elliot. I don't know, seven years? Since, um, yeah, it's been yeah. a long time. That's, that's like my brother now. It's like a little crazy. <laughs> But the funny thing is, we met him because he drove us somewhere. Yeah, yeah. He was he started out as our driver, um, our Uber driver. Yep. So I was like, yo, this guy's got to like him. Uh, yeah, you're like, let's take his number because he's so nice. And then he drove me to Cape Post, spent the weekend there with him. And I was like, <laughs> yep, this is my brother now. I think some of the conversations we had, just his take on, on Black America was, it just opened my eyes to what, the brothers here see and how yeah. their their thinking is over there. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for uh, letting people know. Wait, what, what brown oh, coat blue? Thank yep. you for letting people know about uh, um, you, said, your yeah, pickup. And... <laughs> oh, see, yeah, he told me. Yeah, so yeah, I, I I think that's the thing is that 
it can be intimidating coming here when you're an expat because you don't know who is out to take advantage of you and who is going to help you have a better experience, right? Like some right. people will take away from your experience yeah. and some people will contribute to a positive experience. And that's that's where I think having someone who can make good recommendations to you is yeah. really helpful. There is a tour that you put together and you've been doing piece, you did a big chunk of it with someone just recently and they were just going on and on about how great every, like it was so smooth and everything was well thought out and I had a really good time and it seemed like everything, you know, like everything was, was planned ahead and thought out. And, it, and I was like, yeah, it's because Tony put that yeah, together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Our tours are great because every location on our tour, I went out, I drove out to the, to that location. Um, Tony is not lying. He really did yeah. drive out. And when I tell you the ladies will appreciate our tours because I, I went in <laughs> with the mentality <laughs> If my wife is on this tour, she has to go to the restroom. Will that be a pleasant experience? So, kept you ladies in mind with my tours. Trust me. Now, as a sidebar, let me tell you, ladies, that I've been some places where I, <laughs> who, let's just say, bathrooming, bathroom <clears throat> options here is a huge issue. So, thank you for thinking of the ladies on your tours because having a bathroom. Having a bathroom where you'll actually mm -hmm. be willing to right. use it. Right. Sometimes they're two different things. Thank you, dear. Guys, you'll appreciate it as well. <laughs> you know I got you. You know, you know I got you. That means there's always a club nearby. <laughs> mm, yeah. Well, if you guys are interested in checking out any of Tony's tours, you can do that at the website, www.expatlifegama.com. Uh, he does have scheduled tour events. So if you are a solo traveler and you want to hook up with guys just like you or ladies who are just like you, join the guys trip or the girls trip. Otherwise, if you want to come in with your own group and flex your own dates and times, you can do that too. So definitely check it out if you are interested. Mm -hmm. As another reminder, don't forget to hit like and the like bell, not the like button, as I mistakenly called it earlier. You just reversed it again. You just said the like bell, unlike the like button. Wow. Yo, man. Is that a kid? Go to in the sleep. This, these kids <laughs> up here laughing because I made a mistake. And uh, it's like. You made it twice, though. <laughs> I love you, dear. I love you yeah, so much. I love, first you, first I love, I love you so shit. much. Mm. All right, okay. All right, y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we have answered just all. Just hit of the thumbs up questions. thing. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody wants to know if we're going to stream that February party live. We have not done that before. Not for this one. Yes. Not, not for, this, for one. this one. But that's something we could. Oh, I think you would. Ah, no, 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 no. Oh, is it like what happens at the party stays at the party? Hey, hey, Somebody might be like, what are they doing in the background? What kind of party is this going? No, a party's going to get too wild. But our party's going to get too wild. But no, um, you want to come to our party, see what they're about. And uh, the, oh, the parties are listed on the website too. The expat the making dates are the listed. dates, yeah, the location. So, is. if you want to be here in the next two, three months, there'll be another one. You have the dates for the expats. Everybody was always uh complaining about, ah, I'm just gonna miss it by a day or two. So, now you know, we're posting the dates for these expat meet and greets. You get an idea of when they're going to be, and you can try to make your travel arrangements around those times so you can be in attendance yes a lot of people want people have actually asked if we'll have one while they're there like yeah just as a bonus one for them yeah sorry yeah. <laughs> but Prit wants to know if uh i will be at the party i will will i dance at this party probably i'm gonna spike her drink that'll have me asleep before curfew <laughs> <laughs> so like 7 30 why is why is iowa asleep by the pool <laughs> Spiked your drink earlier. <laughs> oh, goodness. Now she's out for the count. <laughs> so, yes, we will both be there. And if you have kids, um, you can totally bring them. They won't mm -hmm. go to the after yes, party with yes, Tony. Yes, but... yes, It's a kid-friendly party. So and please. our boys will be in attendance. Mm -hmm. So they will be there as well. Uh, I'm getting my budget together for the ladies' trip to Ghana. Looking forward to it from Miss T. 
uh, you just, you know, you can come for the ladies event so you can do it with a group of people. Otherwise, if you bring your group along, you can do that as well. Mm -hmm. You just got back from the Coco. The Coco Farm. The, the Coco Tata Farm. Porsche Coco Farm. Uh, and that was a really good experience. You brought me wow, some chocolate. I bought you some chocolate. I ate that whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> I know you wanted some, but. It's yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're doing big things. Big yeah. Things. So it's, it's fun. I like the places that you picked. So, Miss T, get that budget together. If you want to find some friends, that's cool too. Somebody wants to know how their dance partner is doing. Is that you or one of the boys? Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, you know, Mariello, she was dancing with uh, Ghana's strongest man. Who's that? I can't recall his name right now, but did I show you the video? She, oh, the big guy, and all muscles. Oh, that's right. He was, he was, he was like, very muscular. Yeah, he was like a good dancer for, to be so muscular. I was like, yo, this guy actually has rhythm and stuff, you know? He's Ghanaian. What do you think, so? Ah, Come yeah, there now. you I go. The people think I can't dance. I know, that's funny. Why do people think I can't dance? I can dance a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. I can't do all the new kid dances where there's like no, 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 don't do five, that. six, seven, eight, seven, three, four. I, I, I don't have all that. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> got a little distracted by that one. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, uh, Tony, somebody was hoping that you would get into the construction business since you have so much experience doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love construction. Construction is <laughs> a little different here and it's a little slower paced than <laughs> I would be wanting to deal with in construction. Um, and if but you are but i do site management right um so i look over your um foreman make sure everything on your site is going the way it should and in a timely manner but i do not want to be uh, full-on construction swinging hammers anymore. <laughs> you do get to the point where you don't want to swing a hammer i, get, I totally get that but the site management, you did a site visit not that long ago and you brought out the drone and you took drone footage so that the person could see, you submitted a report, you submitted a video, you submitted pictures. Mm. So there is that option too. He's yeah. still a little bit in the construction thing. It's Just a little bit. Like a touch, right? Somebody says maybe they can say guest quarters. When when the majority of the Ghanaians start saying guest quarters, I will start saying guest quarters. But that's the thing is that your guests don't stay there. Yeah, your guests stay in your house. Yeah, I, I don't, we'll work on that one. We'll have to figure that one out. <laughs> All right, Mariella, y'all are the best. We love you too, thanks. And uh, Mariella, uh, she came and spent some time here in Temu. We hung out with her before. So she's one of our uh, hardcore fans. We love you, thank you. <laughs> Io, we all know you can dance, stop playing. Yes, she can. My wife has rhythm. Yes, she does. We took a class once. The teacher was like, I know this is going to be hard for you. And I was like, what? Mm. Why do people, they just judge. I'm just saying. <sighs> All right. <laughs> Who's a better dancer? Oh, I was this. Were you pointing at me? No, I'm saying who's a better oh, dancer you. between us. Oh, you. See? I got bad knees, man. <laughs> I'm rocking my chair. <laughs> <laughs> who's a better chair dancer? Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> Come on now. I feel like we should throw on the music and have a dance challenge here in our chair. Uh, oh, 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 wow, look at the time. No, so okay. soon, so <laughs> soon. Well, uh, let me go ahead then and get this last reminder up for the Expat Life Ghana party. If you are interested, you should definitely QR code this right now so that you can get to the Facebook group and join and find out the details. We look forward to seeing you in that Facebook group and at the live event. It's always so yeah, much fun. Live event. <laughs> always so much fun. So definitely plan on joining us. Yeah. Um, what do I, I want, I wanted to say something. I want to say. What did you want to say? Hmm. Uh, hmm. Can't remember. Well, can't, uh, Alzheimer's in action. I mean, uh, hmm. hey, hey. Get, see. <laughs> Laugh All again. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All well, right. Luke would like you to drop a comment. Drop a comment below and let us know what you think. There, did you think of what you were missing yet? Yeah, I did. I, it came to me. <laughs> and it left just that quick. <laughs>
All right, uh, y'all. No, yeah, um, seriously, though, um, if you're in town um, uh, and you want to join or uh, get in on this party, you got to be a member of the Facebook group. That way uh, we kind of keep it controlled in a sense. We keep it with the family. Our Facebook yeah, family. so um, it's going to be a great, great event. So yeah, DJs, food, it. fun, dancing. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a good time. And my wife's going to be dancing. All right. I can't now. I just put all that out there in the streets. Now I got to try to back it up, huh? Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, if you go, I'll go. You dance, I'll dance. Oh, I'm going to dance. Uh oh. (laughs) All right, guys. Well, yep. I think that is it for the evening. Thank you all for hanging out with us. Um, If we don't see you at the meet and greet, we'll see you at the next live. So, hey, Charlie out for now. (laughs) 